phase. Uh, chair recognizes Mr. Gosar of Arizona for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Gupta, for your comments. 107,000 people died of overdoses in 2021, as you said. It appears 109,000 people died of overdoses from February of 2022 to 2023. No matter how the administration spins this, the problem's getting worse. There are many reasons for the drug crisis. Instead of dependency that we saw on drugs, now we're seeing crank, uh, uh, a crank and fentanyl being put together, and we're seeing instant death. Yes, there are more granular po policy fixes that are worthy of focus. However, I would like to zoom out on, on this one problem. Biden's national drug control strategy is 150 pages. The words God and faith are not mentioned one time. People need a purpose to be happy. To quote Robert F. Kennedy, I know that's awful hard, quote, unemployment kills, end of quote. The left offers endless benefits in other words, dependency, because dependent population votes for the providers of those benefits. But a human being, but a human being needs a purpose, a good job, the ability to provide for a family, a belief in a creator in order to be happy. He or she doesn't need lockdowns and destroy their small businesses. He or she doesn't need free needles and syringes so they can inject themselves with deadly drugs. He or she doesn't need lower wages and more crime to thank illegal and alien invasion. That only raises anxiety. He or she doesn't need to fight in pointless foreign wars. Words related to race are mentioned 50 times in this same document. Racism and white supremacy have nothing to do with the fact that our population is being decimated by illegal drugs and high rates of suicide. The lack of purpose fostered by the left is the real culprit. Now I've got some questions for you. I'd first like to submit for the record the following article by the heritage immigration expert, Laura Rise. The decision to allow 30,000 individuals from these very poor countries to enter the U.S. every month exacerbate or improve the drug crisis in the United States. Thank you, Congressman. Um, I will say that uh, the levels have flattened. We need to do more. We need to create a recovery-ready nation, recovery-ready businesses, as you mentioned, and we need to have people find hope and purpose in their life and we're taking all aspects of it. You mentioned faith. We are meeting with faith leaders across the nation very soon next month. Um, but I don't I, see it, it published. I'm it's sorry. one thing to say that you're meeting with these people, but it's another thing to be acknowledged, right? I can tell you that this is an important piece of what we're trying to do, is accomplish or bring all communities together, whether they're business, faith, treatment, public health, or public safety, law enforcement. It is important. All of us have a role to play. None of us can fix this problem by themselves. I agree. Recognize that. But allowing thousands of people who do not speak English and who will have a very hard time finding a job to enter the United States will exacerbate the crisis in the United States. But that's not all. The Biden administration is bastardizing the use of federal app originally created by the Trump administration to facilitate cross-border tourism and commerce under the Trump administration called the CBP-1 app. That allows illegal aliens to make an asylum appointment at a port of entry. 37,500 illegal aliens can enter the U.S. per month. According to RISE, if aliens entering through the parole and CBP-1 app were added to the DHS official encounters numbers, then encounters would return to historic levels of 200,000 plus per month, numbers only seen under the Biden administration. Do you believe facilitating the entry of 37,500 aliens per month, many of whom do not speak English and will have a very hard time finding a job, will exacerbate or improve the drug crisis in the United States? Thank you, Congressman. Uh, what we're trying to do is put technology at the border to make sure that where the drugs are coming through, we're stopping every piece of that drug that we can stop. But you're not, because I'm from Arizona, and we see hundreds and thousands of pounds of fentanyl coming across the border. So no matter how you try to intercept it, it's going to make it worse. So let me, I got limited time. The National Drug Control Strategy published by your office says, advancing racial equity is one of the seven priorities that your office deems to be most important in fighting the drug crisis. Another is harm reduction, which means facilitating drug use for drug